MAXAR-3 mission will deliver the final fifth and sixth satellites to complete the first block of MAXAR's next generation Worldview Legion constellation. And confirmation from Mission Control that we've had MECO, Stage SEP, and SES-1. We also heard the call out, and on the left-hand side of your screen, we have great views of our boost back burn, which is what's currently putting the booster on a trajectory to head back toward Earth and touch down at landing zone one. Next up, the fairing will jettison away from the second stage, as it's no longer needed now that we're in space, and the payloads no longer need that aerothermal protection. Fairing separation confirmed. Right on schedule. Those fairing halves are now headed back to Earth to be recovered by our ocean recovery ship, Bob. Stage one, boost back shutdown. And there's confirmation of our stage one boost back burn shutdown. Now at just about T plus three and a half minutes into today's mission, the next major milestone we're standing by for is our first stage entry burn. Getting some great views on the left-hand side of your screen of that grid fin deployment right now too. Those hypersonic grid fins are the primary mechanical mechanism by which we steer the rocket on its way back to Earth. Nominal trajectory is there for both our first and second stages. Again, in case you are just joining us, right now our first stage is on its way back to landing zone one at Kennedy Space Center, while stage two is on its way to orbit to deploy two Worldview Legion satellites for our customer Maxar Intelligence. To start the entry burn at about T plus six minutes, we'll relight the three M1D engine, the three of the M1D engines on board stage one, starting with the center engine known as E9, followed shortly after by E1 and E5, which is similar to pumping the brakes to slow down the vehicle as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. We need to slow down to reduce re-entry forces, which then helps us to recover and reuse that first oh no, stage. I see it. You're doing great. During the entry burn, I Falcon 9 is it. decelerating by firing those Merlin engines, but we're no, still moving really anything. fast. This causes the vehicle to fly through yeah, Merlin's no, exhaust, I, gas, exhaust gases. It's high. No, I can't see it. Babe. Great views of it on your screen there right now. Those exhaust gases are also known as the rocket's plume. That in turn deposits a layer of soot on the vehicle surface. The soot comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses, and with each flight, the soot builds up a little more on the outside of the vehicle, giving it that flight-proven look. <laughs> what are you talking about? We are standing by with these incredible tracking shots for that entry burn begin at T plus 6 minutes and 11 seconds. Of course, reusability is key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, which enables more investments in critical scientific research. The Falcon 9 first stage supporting today's mission is about to perform this entry burn for the fourth time. And of course, meanwhile, up in space, our stage two continues to look good, and we'll keep bringing you those MVAC engine views as we have them.
landing confirmed. And confirmation that our Falcon 9 booster has touched back but down on landing zone one at Kennedy Space Center and that we have had successful MVAC shutdown on board stage two. This was the fourth launch and landing for this first stage, and this landing marks SpaceX's 404th recovery of a SpaceX orbital class.